So my story starts with one of these, a cassette. I think it's probably bedtime, so I've got some books here I'd like to read to you. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you is when you hear this sound, it's time to turn the page. Okay, here we go. The first book I'd like to read is called... So this is a recording my dad would make and mail home to me on cassettes when he was traveling when I was a kid, and started my relationship with how human and how important sound can be as a relationship. But progressed on to when I was in school, figured out I was dyslexic and reading wasn't my thing, so voice became my only way to consume and pull in information and educate myself. And then as I was finishing my computer engineering degree at Lehigh, voice was still something first for me as a choral singer and performer internationally, as well as doing engineering. And what I realize is I know how intimate voice is, I know how emotional it is, and how incredibly powerful it is. But this is something that I saw much for myself, but then started to see this is much more important for a larger population. Because really, voice is everywhere. I think Matt touched on it very well. You know, Alexa is a great example of a smart speaker, but it's not just that. It's now that every car is getting a voice assistant integrated into it. And it's not just that every phone now has Google Assistant that you can talk to when it's in your pocket, just as much as when it's in front of your face or even now that every speaker and every microphone is effectively connected to the cloud. So any time of day and any device becomes something that you can use voice to interact with. So this is where Spoken Layer plays. We support the whole ecosystem. We handle content, human voices, smart distribution, and actual consumption data, and we power this for the entire ecosystem as a B2B company. But tactically what we do is we transform written content from great content sources into human voice and create that experience for them. And we call this experience a spoken edition. And why now? I think we heard a couple times, right, this is a new platform. But what drives a new platform is amazing content and you have to have a lot of great content to do that. So we do that scalably and that's why the timing is now for voice, something that I've actually spent the past three decades looking at but now it has kind of come to fruition. And the way we do that is we take great content from our publishers and they push it into our API. They use our voice cloud, which is a distributed network of voiceover talent, hundreds and hundreds of people to get the right voice for the right piece of content. We create a spoken edition of that content, use smart distribution to make it available in all the right places, use our ad network and ad technology to put in ads and sponsorships and make it available everywhere. So anyone using any device can talk to that content and can hear it wherever they are all the while capturing a ton of great data. Why do you think this is so interesting? Because we are unbundling all the great content that comes from the greatest content creators. We are repackaging it into a new format so people can spend more time with it and more times a day in more places and reimagining what content is, what the audience can be for that content, and new revenue streams for all these content creators and people involved. But we're not the only person that believes in this. We started our journey with Time and Smithsonian and Ozzy, cutting our teeth on how to create voice scalably. And last year, we launched the Spoken Edition platform. Here's today's Spoken Edition of Wine. The Financial Times. Slate. Gizmodo. TechCrunch. Playboy. Mashable. Reuters. You're listening to the Huffington Post Spoken Edition. And all these companies are powered by us. And during the time of Voice Camp, we doubled the number of media partners we're sitting behind and powering. And this summer, working with a bunch of great people to bring them into the world of audio as well. But during the course of Voice Camp, we expanded beyond media and publishers. We started working with brands, with media. Last week, we launched SAP's audio experience, CAA, and this summer with a bunch more agencies, brands, and content creators. And all this content becomes available in all the top places, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Google, and Amazon. But our relationship with these companies is incredibly deep, so deep that so far, almost all of our partnerships and clientele have come through referrals directly through Google, Amazon, and Apple. You know, interestingly, we power about a third of the content available on narrated news for Google all comes from our platform, and we helped them launch that platform in December. But one thing I'm really excited to do is we're even moving beyond just brands and media companies, and we worked with former Vice President Joe Biden to launch his first voice experience. Hey, I'm Joe Biden. This is Biden's briefing. Up next, I'm... Well, we work with Joe and his team so that he can curate content every day and create what is the 2017 version of... Hey, the I'm Joe site. Biden. This is Biden's briefing. Up next, I'll bring you stories that have caught my attention and I think merit yours. Keep listening for more. So working with him to create what is the modern version of a fireside chat and making it interactive in something that all users can talk directly to Joe and Joe can talk back to them. 
We think this is interesting using a spoken edition. A company like Medium uh, that recently launched an audio experience which is actually powered by us, within a month, 8% of their paying subscribers converted to weekly listeners away from just reading. Time, which is one of our longest standing partners, turned what was a 15 second session in text into an 18 minute listening session in audio. And Wired, within launching their spoken editions, became profitable on their audio efforts by working with us and our platform. Voice is massive. Voice is everywhere. It's in every device you have, it's in your car, and even just the single use case of commuting, 2.6 billion hours a month are spent by Americans just in that single use case. And that's still dominated by the radio industry, which alone is $16 billion and hasn't even moved to going digital yet. And I think this is the one thing that we see is why the time is now for voice, is every other industry, whether it's print going from a physical magazine to Facebook controlling the newsfeed, getting atomized so the user has control, or from a VHS to Netflix being in control of the experience. This is why we think voice is so interesting. It puts the user in control so they can curate the content, and we have the opportunity to bring those stakeholders together. The content creators, the distributors, the brands, all unified through our platform, and the fact that we've been doing it for five years, we have more experience and connections than anyone else in the industry, so we're positioned to really grow this space significantly. And we started to see the traction for that. We've been growing 50% month over month since the beginning of this year, growing from about 5K a month in recurring SaaS revenue up to over 60 just during the time of voice camp. And with notable clients like SAP and Medium or Slate, which even has a sister company that powers a whole podcast network, decided to work with us to power their spoken editions instead of doing it in-house. And we've done this with a very small team to date. Earlier this year, we were only about four or five people. But over the time we've been at voice camp, we have had a couple really great people. One, we stole one of the venture partners at Betaworks who decided to leave Betaworks and join our team. He was also the CEO of Dig for a little while, Josh Arbach, who we're really excited about to announce publicly today. Jeremy Mims, um, we can announce yesterday, um, was the co-founder of Own Local, formed relationships with 3,500 media companies, came over, is now coming over to run partnerships with us. And Olivier also recently joined, who ran all the global distribution partnerships and relationships for TED and all of their content, who knows premium content just like all the premium content that exists in our network. We're really at an inflection point. I think Matt hit it home on a couple things in the discussion we just had. Voice is changing and content is going to be king in this ecosystem. But there's a lot of stakeholders in it. There's content creators, there's distributors, there's brands, and they all want to control it, but they can't. The way for this to work is to have a unified ecosystem. And we've seen that the ecosystem play is working through our revenue growth, through the amazing people that have joined our teams, and the fact that we have an inbound pipeline of all the people that have reached out to us just in the past couple months of 100 companies that we want to work with. And so far, I haven't been able to have all those conversations. But that's why we've been here. So one thing I'd like to do is anyone on the Spoken Layer team, just to stand up for a second. So if you're, whether you're on the investment side, whether you're on the content side or distributor side, we want this ecosystem to grow, and we think this is the group of people who can do that. So come talk to any of us, because we think now is the time in which voice can really own and change the way people are consuming content. So let's talk. Thanks so much.